And Saturday night stopped in to have a few drinks. Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz singer Dennis Van Arsen. We talked to him about his new 2024 CD, Just Call It Love. It is the fourth studio album from him teamed up with pianist and composer Jeff Franzel. It represents the musical development of an artist who won The Voice of Holland. We get into his beginnings, evolution, and the future ahead. Enjoy this interview. It's great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out for the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Excited. It's cool. So before we get into uh, Just Call It Love, your fourth album, I want to know, yeah. how did you survive the the COVID period? You know, we're going on the four-year anniversary, <laughs> but it was two intense years yeah. in between. How did you get through it? And how did it change you? Uh, I barely got through it. I, I always say it shouldn't have lasted six months more because I probably would have been back at being a project manager uh and i would have just found myself a job because it was it was really it was devastating like for me my career started in 2019 when i won the voice of holland uh, and then all the doors flew open i met incredibly uh interesting and, and talented people who were in the industry and i was just a project manager at a marketing company so i had no idea like i'm not i'm not uh, i'm not an idiot but i had no idea what it would take to be a singer professionally i didn't know anybody in the industry i didn't have a network or anything so uh, i had one year like uh, from february 2019 to march 2020 in which my career was just exploding from zero to 1000 in a year and then COVID came and it just absolutely devastated everything the calendar was cleared like everybody's and, uh, and and the reason I survived is really because the incredibly lovely uh, people that surrounded me, uh, people that I work with very closely, they were in the same boat, obviously. Uh, and we just pulled each other through. We did live streams. We kept investing. We kept writing. Uh, we did record an album in a period where there was no money coming in because I'm a, uh, my money mostly comes in from doing live shows. And especially at that point, I didn't have a catalog or anything uh, to get revenue from in terms of streams or whatever. So uh, money was really slow. And yet everything that we still had was uh, being invested into new music. And we released an album in November tw 2021. Uh a day before the final lockdown hit. So that was perfect timing. Uh, <laughs> that was terrible. And, uh, and then, well, when it was over, I, I, I'm really grateful and thankful for the fact that all the lovely people surrounding me and my friends, my family, my girlfriend, my band, my sound guy, my manager, everybody uh, just stuck with me and we stuck with each other through the pandemic and the misery and uh and that's really what what saved me and how it changed me uh in so many ways i th i i am kind of traumatized <laughs> by it yeah um, um yeah it definitely left its mark like two years of hoping and and seeing your calendar be full and then have it swept uh, empty and uh yeah it was it was a rough period but uh i mean it showed me again that anything in life is possible and that that doesn't only go in the positive direction. It doesn't only work like anything can happen. I'm a project manager at one point and then all of a sudden I win a big TV show and I get to live my dream. It's not just the positive side. No, the negative things, uh, that's that's where it goes too. Like, anything can happen on that side too. So it, yeah, it, it, was, it was definitely a rough period, but uh, I, I grew through it, I think. So talk to me a little bit about this album. How relieving is it to have it out and to, to watch it come to fruition? Oh, it's so, I mean, it's, it's coming out uh, on March 15th. I'm not sure when are you, when is this going to be released? This, this, uh, this uh, show? Prob probably here in about a week or so. All right, Maybe all a right. few weeks. Sure. So the album is coming out March 15th and I'm really, really, really excited. Like, this goes back to 2019, obviously, when I just won the Voice of Holland. I got a I got a DM on Instagram from a Dutch guy who worked at a um, a Dutch publisher, and uh, he sent me a DM saying, "Hey, we have this guy, this American songwriter who's coming to the Netherlands, and he used to be Frank Sinatra's pianist, and Frank Sinatra's like my big like who the biggest hero 
of all time, like the, the, the best one, the best singer there ever was, if you ask me. So I'm like, oh my God, I get to be in a room with a guy who played with Frank Sinatra and who toured with Mel Forme and he, he played with Sammy Davis Jr. All these heroes of mine that have sadly passed, I get to be in the room with someone who played with them. Like that dream came true then when he asked me if I wanted to have a writing session with that, with that guy. Uh, and his name was Jeff Frenzel. And he brought a songwriter, a lyricist with him, Maria Christensen, who wrote songs for Celine Dion, for Jennifer Lopez, for, for Disney, for like huge songwriting giants. And I had never written a song before. So uh, I'm in the room with these two American songwriting giants. Uh, I, I'm just fresh into the music business. We start writing songs. We hit it off really, really well. Um, uh, and uh, we wrote three songs in a day. And then, um, uh, well, we, we really hit it off. So we, we scheduled the next writing session and another and then another. And I flew to Florida to write there and then they flew back. So there was a, a connection growing. And uh, after one of those first sessions back in 2019, my manager said, you know what would be an amazing idea if in a couple of years time, the two of you, Jeff Frenzo and Dennis Van Arsen, the piano player who played alongside Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis, Mel Tremé, you name them, who played in the Les Brown Orchestra, together with a young crooner from the Netherlands whose idols all of those guys were. So we need to make an album in a few years' time, not now, but just the two of you. And, uh, and we finally set out to do it in uh, September of last year. And because it's, uh, well, it's an album with 11 songs, all written by the three of us. So the, the crew is Maria Christensen, Jeff Frenzel, and myself, uh, two Americans and me singing and writing American songs. I thought, let's, we have to do that in an American studio with American musicians, with an American engineer. So let's do it over there. And, uh, and we did. We went to New York City in September to Sears Sound Studio, and we just worked our butts off and uh and we we made it happen so i'm i'm so excited to see what will go down if this if this uh this album is finally released next month so, so much hard work and preparation went into it like it's crazy absolutely so what are you ultimately hoping the listener gets from this album well the the message that is very much in this album and every song the 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 red line through all of the songs is love uh, and I think that's the most important thing in life. And coming from a guy that's 29, that might be a little, I, I don't want to be preached here or anything. Uh, but I do think that that is, we are focusing so much on the wrong things in life. And we're, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's wars going on. There is uh, people, you know, focusing on material things and stuff like that. We should be focusing on, I think, on, on creating meaningful relationships with one another and that's that goes with ups and downs just like what i just talked to you about with my career in the beginning uh, going up and going down that's that's life basically and uh and that's definitely the you know the ride that i want to take the listener to on this album it's all these songs about love it's about falling in love it's about love for your family it's about love being in the little things it's about your getting your heart broken, losing faith in love and falling back in love. It's all this, yeah, all of the things surrounding love. That's what this album is about. And I hope that the message that we should never give up on love, that that comes across very well at the end of the album. So how did this love affair with jazz begin and kind of take steam into winning this competition and becoming who you are now? Oh, that's very clear. I remember when I was seven years old, uh, my my parents they had the CD Robbie Williams uh, the album Swing When You're Winning I'm not sure if you've heard that one I think it's Robbie Williams best selling record of all time still to this day and uh, that's a that's an album where he sang Mr Bojangles and Ain't That a Kick in the Head uh, I think he even sang My Way One for My Baby these beautiful songs uh, American Standards these jazz classic songs from Dean Martin Sammy Davis Frank Sinatra the coolest men that have ever lived. That's what he called them. 
and that's and he was right about that if you ask me uh and he sang all those songs and i was a seven-year-old boy listening to these songs unable to sit still and just listen i had to move and swing along and uh and then my parents bought the dvd of his concert live at the royal albert hall where he, where he did all those songs with a gigantic orchestra and there was people seated and people wearing tuxedos and beautiful dresses all dressed up and super classy event and as a seven-year-old boy I, I looked at that and i and i said that's what i want that's what i want and uh well obviously as a seven-year-old what can you do so life life goes on and i i try to apply for many uh, conservatories and, and, and the rock academy and whatever musical educations there are they all turned me down and then i graduated from a uh, university of applied sciences in communication and when i by the time i was 24 i was a project manager who had failed to become a singer and i decided to take one last shot one final shot at and at TV competition uh, where they would never let anybody sing any Frank Sinatra song because it's not top 40 and it's not, uh, people don't like that. The viewer will uh, tune out or, or zap away, turn away. Uh, so it will cost us viewers. And I did it with me with my free audition. And they said, all right, we're going to fight for you to be able to sing this Frank Sinatra song. And that was, that's life. And they called me up a couple of days later and said, well, we really had to fight with uh, the production team, but we managed to uh, make it happen. So you're, you're okay. You can sing that life with your blind audition. So I was over the moon and I was happy. And I said, okay, I'm going to give it my best shot. If they don't like it, then I'll go home. And, uh, and that's it. But, well, turns out they did like it. And I got to sing Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis and Michael Bublé and, and all of the, my heroes. I got to sing their songs right up until the final where I was voted to be the winner of, uh, of the ninth season of, uh, of the voice of Holland. And that, well, there's in, in, in Holland, that's one of, that used to be one of the biggest TV shows on commercial television where two and a half people would watch it every week. So you can imagine that that's, uh, that opened a lot of doors for me and uh, all of the big bands in the Netherlands wanted to work with me and they wanted to do projects and everybody started messaging me, emailing me. That was for, the first month and then that kind of cooled down but by that time i'd found the right team and, and and you know a group of people to work with i found a band a manager a sound guy a producer for the first album i found some songwriters in this uh, that's the story i just told you about jeff and maria i found some other songwriters to write songs with so i, I kind of settled with this fantastic group of people and i'm, I'm very proud to say that that's uh, very much still the same group of people that i work with today almost exactly five years later. So what is it that you like the best about being a professional musician? What gets you up every day? What motivates you? Uh, it's, well, it's funny because th this industry and this, this line of work, for me, I'm an independent artist. So um, a year, let's say a year, exists out of three different parts. The first part is I start writing new music. And when I write new music, I get to record that new music. And when I record new music and I put it out, I have a reason to play live because I have new songs that I want to play to people and I have new stories to tell to a live audience. Uh, so it's each one of these three parts. I'm really bringing it down uh, as simple as, uh, as it can be. But those three parts are all so incredibly different. I get to be in a writing mode. And when I'm in a writing mode, I always write with other people. When I'm in a writing mode, words and melodies, that's all you're focusing on. That's all you're looking for the right quotes when you read a book or you're watching a TV show. And that's such a totally different mode than recording mode, where you are listening to every tiny little detail in an arrangement and in a production. And you get to really zoom in on each second of a song and try to make the best out of what we had written uh, in that first phase uh, and, and that's also really really a cool thing and then all of the, the things that come with recording and mixing and mastering producing arranging uh, I, I love to be a part of all of that even though I can't like write any music or arrangement myself um, 
I don't play any instruments. So it's for me, I feel like an amateur <laughs> being in that situation, but that is really, really cool to be a part of, I think. And to see that song go from demo to a finished product where there was thought going into each and every little detail. And that's incredibly cool. But, and then we get into the uh, performing phase of my work. And that is, I think, the, the one that is really, well, at first, the most scary because you have all these new songs and new stories you want to tell and sing. And you you just hope, that's all you can do is hope that the audience is going to pick up on it and it's going to love it as much as you do and they're going to appreciate it um, because you put your, your heart and soul into all of that. And, uh, and and playing it live for an audience for the first couple of times is very, very nerve-wracking, but once you see that it hits, then yeah, playing live and, and performing those songs is the best feeling there will probably ever be. So it's I think it's the diversity in, in my line of work, in my, my being as an as a independent artist is uh, is yeah, that's a very fun part. So Dennis, the album comes out on the fifteenth. If anyone wants yeah. to get the album, live shows. Anything more about your world? Where's the best place to go? Best place to go is uh, uh, my Instagram or my TikTok or my website. Uh, you can just find me by uh, typing my name at Dennis Van Arsen, which is a weird Dutch name, but you'll figure it out. I'm sure it's going to be somewhere on the uh, on the website or wherever. Dennis Van Arsen, uh, and you can check everything, my tour dates, uh, releases, videos, and more on DennisVanArsen.com. And you can always follow me on TikTok and YouTube. I'm everywhere, literally everywhere. Spotify, Apple Music, you name it. Wonderful. Dennis, thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Best of luck with the album. I'm glad everything's picked back up. There's there's uh, sunshine in the air. So thank you and best of luck with everything. Thank you so much for your time, Jeff. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview. Where we give you a bit of insight into the finest singers in Holland, Kansas City, and spots all over the globe giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Dennis for his time and story. If you want to hear more Neon Jazz interviews, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to us at YouTube. And for everything Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Me and the guy on the piano, how bad it gets when it gets this bad. Neon Jazz.